What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at a new portable power station. This is the DJI Power 1000. As I'm sure you all know, DJI is well known as one of the best drone and action camera manufacturers out there. But now they put out two different power stations to join this space as well. It's always good to see a large company like DJI make a power station because since their reputation is so large, they can't just put out any regular power station, but have to come out swinging to compete with all the power stations already out there. With that being said, today I'll be comparing the DJI Power 1000 to the EcoFlow Delta 2. If you're not aware, EcoFlow is a large and reputable company in the power station space, so I figure it'll be good to see how these two power stations stack against each other. All right, so when it comes to specifications, these do share a lot of similarities. First off, they both have a LifePo 4 battery with a capacity of 1,024 watt hours. Their operating temperatures are both 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 114 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it comes to their cycle counts, DJI advertises a 70% capacity for over 4,000 cycles and EcoFlow advertises 80% for over 3,000 cycles. So a little bit different in how they word that, but you should be able to get 10 years out of each power station. And last but not least, they both have a built-in UPS function with a 20 millisecond switchover. And that's where all the similarities end. So let's go ahead and dive into the differences. So first off, taking a look at the design, this is definitely a very nice looking power station. I love that it has a unique look to it and doesn't really look like every other power station out there. It's basically all black, very nice and sturdy plastic. Comparing the two, the plastic is definitely a lot thinner on the EcoFlow. So if I tap the EcoFlow on the top, and if I tap this one, you could just hear it's a much more solid sound to it. And it also feels a lot more thick as well. So as far as outside plastic construction goes, I'm definitely gonna give that to the DJI. But going back to the design, yeah, definitely a very nice looking power station. Everything looks a lot more techy and refined. I love the way the screen looks as well. It's nice and bright with a lot of contrast and this orange accent just makes it a little more unique as well. As you can see, we have orange here, then we have some more orange over here and over here. So it just kind of ties it all together and makes it look more like a very intentional design. Coming over to the EcoFlow Delta 2, by no means is it a ugly power station, but honestly, in my opinion, it just looks a little bit generic and there's many other power stations out there that look just like it. So you have all black on the bottom, then you have silver on the top. You have these two handles up here as well. Same with the DJI, you also have two handles. Handles feel just as sturdy on both of them and the weight is very comparable on both power stations as well. So as far as carrying them goes, they're gonna be very similar. Looking at the screen side by side, the DJI one definitely pops a lot more. On top of that, it also has more contrast and bolder numbers as well. This one's a little dimmer, and as you can see, it has very thin letters. So at a distance, this one's gonna be much easier to read. So taking a look at the ports right here, you have two AC ports, and these can do a maximum of 2200 watts stable, 2600 watts sustained for 30 seconds, and then they also have a peak of 4400 watts. So definitely a lot of power, especially for a power station of this size. Coming here in the middle, you have two USB-A ports. And right next to this, you have two 140 watt USB-C ports. A lot of power stations have 100 watt ports, but this is the first time I've seen a 140 watt on a power station. According to the specs, these can charge two 16 inch MacBook Pros to 50% in only 30 minutes. Besides that, a lot of gaming laptops and portable consoles charge at 140 watts nowadays as well. So this is definitely gonna speed up charging on those devices. Coming over here, you have your AC charging port and this can charge at a maximum of 1200 watts. And then over here, you have two proprietary DJI ports and these are called bi-directional SDC ports. These can take an input of 400 watts and an output of 240 watts. So DJI sells a lot of dongles that attach to these to add other ports onto the power station. And then besides that, they also sell a cable that allows you to charge DJI drones at up to 200 watts. So if you have a DJI drone, this is gonna be the best bet to go because you're gonna get the fastest charge out of this power station compared to any other power station out there. Coming over to EcoFlow, this has ports on the front of it, then it has more ports on the back of it. Honestly, I prefer the ports to be all in one place like it has on the DJI. So looking at the ports, you have four USB-A ports. Down here, you have two USB-A ports. These are only 100 watts, which is definitely still good, but it's not gonna charge as fast as DJI. 
Coming to the side, you have your battery expansion port. So if you're looking for a power station that you can grow and expand, that's where the EcoFlow might be a better option. Because as of right now, you cannot buy any expansion batteries for the DJI. And then flipping the EcoFlow around, up top you have your AC charging port, your solar charging port, and then you have six AC ports down here. And then last but not least, right down here, you have two DC ports and a car cigarette lighter port as well. So as you can see, you do have more ports on the EcoFlow. And honestly, I would have liked to see at least three or four AC ports here on the DJI. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the inverter on this. As I said earlier, this has a power handling of 2200 watts and a peak of 4400 watts. And then they say that this can handle 2600 watts sustained for 30 seconds. All right, so I just plugged in an electric feeder. And as you can see, it's pulling a little over 1400 watts. And one thing that's very impressive is even though I've been running this 1400 watt load for about three, four minutes now, no fan has kicked on on this power station. I'm not sure what wattage it kicks on, but at 1400 watts, most other power stations would already be blaring loud. I tested this before. One thing I really like about it is the fan does turn on at a higher load, but it's a variable fan. So if you plug in maybe 1800 watts, it's gonna be a low setting. And as you draw the wattage up, that's when the fan will increase as well. With many other power stations, including the EcoFlow, which I'll show you shortly, once it has a higher load, the fan just turns to 100%. So even though it doesn't need that much cooling, you still have to have that very loud fan going. So here's the same 1400 watt plugged into the EcoFlow. And as you can hear, this one's already soaring at a high speed with the fan. And the fan also has a slight whine as well. So when it comes to quietness, Hands down, the DJI is definitely taking that one as well. So let me go ahead and plug the EcoFlow into the DJI and that should get us around that 2600 watts that this is supposed to be able to handle for 30 seconds. All right, so that's the closest I could get to it, running a little over 2,500 watts. So it just shut off on me, but it did work as advertised as it ran that low for almost about 40 seconds. So when it comes to its power handling claims, the DJI definitely works as advertised. So let's go ahead and test out the inverter on the EcoFlow now. This one has a power handling of 1,800 watts and a peak of 2,700 watts. And then it's also advertised to sustain 2400 watts for 30 seconds. All right, so I plugged in the same heater, running about 1600 watts now, but it'll drop down to about 1400 watts. With further testing, I found the EcoFlow does have three speeds when it comes to the fan noise, and the lowest one starts at about 800 watts, but even that fan is still much louder than the DJI. All right, I'm gonna plug the DJI into the EcoFlow, and that should give us the same wattage since they both have the same charging speed. And as you can see, it did shut off. It peaked at about 2,400 watts and shut off right away. So let me go ahead and run the heater on a lower mode and see what we can get. All right, so I switched the heater down to low. It's pulling a little under 900 watts. Let's go ahead and plug in DJI so it can pull that additional 1,200 watts. Up to about 2,100 watts now. Again, this is rated for 1800 watts stable with 2400 watts for 30 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in there and see if it can do this for 30 seconds. All right, so I had that running and as you can see, it just shut off and that was at about 40, 45 seconds. So it can do 2100 watts for a little over 30 seconds, but I could not get it to do that 2400 watts sustained as it advertises. Definitely still very good, especially for a power station of this size. But once again, DJI also takes the lead when it comes to inverter capabilities as well. So when it comes to charging speed, these both charge at 1200 watts, which is plenty fast for a power station of this size. So regardless of which one you go with, you're going to get a very fast charging speed. But the advantage DJI has here is its noise. As I showed you earlier, even at 1200 watts, there's absolutely no fan noise. And this also transfers over to charging as well. If you leave it charging for a longer time, the fan does kick on, but it's very, very silent. With the EcoFlow, the fan turns on much quicker and it's also much, much louder. 
Another cool feature on the DJI is this charging switch right here. And this lets you on the fly very quickly change the charging speed from either 600 watts to 1200 watts. You might be wondering why you would want to charge at 600 watts when you could charge at a much faster 1200 watts. Well, in a regular house, all your outlets share other outlets on the same breaker. So if you have more things plugged in, a lot of times plugging in a power station at 1200 watts could trip the breaker. So if you have to charge it on a breaker that already has too much things plugged in, that's where that 600 watts is going to work a lot better. I know a lot of power stations have this inside the app, but if I'm moving this power station around to charge it, the last thing I want to do is put down the power station, take out my phone, change the setting, and then start to charge it. This is just so much easier. Just put it down, flick the switch, and really quickly start charging. When it comes to solar charging, the DJI can charge at a max of 800 watts and then the EcoFlow Delta 2 can only do 500 watts. So if you're charging these from 0 to 100 with solar, the DJI is going to charge in only 1.35 hours. Meanwhile, the EcoFlow is going to take a much longer 4 hours. So if you're looking for a power station that you're going to be charging by solar a lot, then DJI is definitely going to be the better option. As I showed you earlier, to connect the solar panels, you need these modules here. They both plug into these ports. And then I have the two modules here at the side. You can plug in three solar panels into each, and they also bolt onto the side. You can just plug it in right here and let it hang off, but if you plan to use these more often, they also include brackets so you can mount them on the side like this. You can mount just one, or you can mount two like I have right here. Along with the DJI Power 1000, I also have six of their 100 watt panels. This is their Zygnus 100 watt panel. I've owned a lot of solar panels over the years, including a lot of smaller ones like this one. And this is definitely the most premium solar panel I've owned so far. The construction and build quality is just very next level. The cloth on the outside of this really just feels like a premium laptop bag. Very nice zippers. And like I said, definitely one of the best 100 watt panels I've used so far. All right, so this is what it looks like with all the six panels unfolded. As you can see, that's a lot of solar, especially for a smaller unit like this one. And what I like about these panels is they also match up perfectly with this power station. So instead of using the typical MC3 connectors, they just have this XT30 on the end, and that plugs directly right here in the side. And as I said earlier, you can plug in six of them. And this just makes it a lot easier compared to clipping on individual MC3 connectors, especially if you're gonna hook up this many panels. As you can see, there's very little sun right now, so I can't test out the solar charging on camera. But I was testing out these panels earlier in the week, and I was able to get about 82 to 83 watts out of a single panel with good sun and ideal conditions, which is pretty efficient for a 100-watt panel. So overall, with all of these combined, you should be able to get about 500 watts of solar charging. As you can see, each of these panels does include a very long cable as well, so you won't need any extension cables, and you can easily move them around and place them where you like. So just to get a close up and show you what the panel looks like. And then another shot of the panel from the back as well. All right, so I drained both of these power stations with about a 1200 watt load and the DJI had a usable capacity of 944 watt hours while the EcoFlow put out 928 watt hours. So very similar overall, but DJI came out slightly ahead at a 92.1 usable capacity versus the 90.6% on the EcoFlow. Most power stations put out about 80 to 85% on average, so 92.1 from the DJI is definitely very impressive. Overall, these are both solid power stations, but for the slightly higher price, I would personally go with the DJI Power 1000 as it's definitely better when it comes to quietness, charging speed, and its overall power handling as well. All right, well, that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.